All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. So I just moved studios and part of that move was a rather traumatic process of boxing up all my printers and moving them to a new house. Moving printers is a lot like moving cats in that you can't just throw them in the car and expect them to be happy. But when they get boxed up and thrown around, things break. And I experienced that with this Eufy Make 3D printer. Uh, this isn't good. This thing's leaking all over the place now after that move. This one was tipped up on its end a couple of times by the movers. Then it was shaking around for, you know, a couple days while I was driving in my U-Haul. So yeah, now I've got this kind of broken solvent pack that I need to dispose of. Not a great experience moving with this thing. Here's uh, some more resin. You can see that leaked resin stuff. I loaded it into the moving van right side up because I know that this thing has liquids in it and I don't want those liquids leaking and dripping all over the place. But the movers that I hired to help figured that they could pack things a little bit more efficiently if they tipped this up on its edge. And I went in to look at things and see how everything was packaged. I was like, ah, that's up on its edge. That's really bad. Let me just flip that right side up. And then I came back out and the thing was flipped up on its edge again. Now I didn't know this at the time, but when you flip this on its side with the solvent pack installed, the solvent pack, um, which is used for cleaning the printer, can leak when it's tipped up on its edge. And that's what happened here. You can see some remains, this kind of gray goo stuff. One of the nice things about this machine is it handles all the nozzle cleaning automatically, but uh, that solvent gets kind of dirty. And if it leaks, then you get this kind of nasty gray fluid everywhere. You really should be using gloves if you're handling any leaked fluids from this machine. Fortunately, this has been sitting out for a couple weeks and it seems to be pretty much dry. I'm not gonna touch it. And if we pull the side panel off, we can see a little bit more of the damage that was done. This whole inner area was covered in that liquid resin. It was this gray goo stuff and it had actually melted some of this foam packing material that was used to uh, protect the printer. And that melted cocktail then seeped into the machine and it kind of glued everything together. Now to clean this out, I used acetone soaked rags and I just wiped everything up as much as I could. And then I set everything out in the sun to cure. It's UV cure resin, so setting it out in the sun uh, does help kind of dry things up a little bit. Also, that solvent needed to evaporate and everything needed to cure. And after about a week of letting it sit out to dry, it was pretty much, uh, you know, not so bad. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, it was a huge mess and I would hate to deal with this again. So for those of you who have one of these on pre-order, just make sure to never tip the thing up on its side 90 degrees to where it should be. I was hoping to explore some use cases where I put this in the back of my car and drove it around places and did different print jobs. But I figure since there's the risk of leaking resin, I'd rather just leave it set up in my office. Now the other thing about this leak is it caused this machine to be pretty stinky. I applauded this machine in my initial review for being relatively not stinky for a resin 3D printer. But once this goo got spilled all over on the inside and it needed to just sit out and dry, this thing didn't smell good. It smelled like a typical resin printer experience because all those solvents and all the resin was just kind of evaporating into the air and being nasty. But now after about two weeks, everything's kind of calmed down and this thing is relatively pleasant to use. Now fortunately, it didn't melt the plastic that this side panel was made out of. Maybe if it had sat for another couple of weeks, then it could have started dissolving this material but it seems to be relatively resistant to the solvent they're using, which is a good thing. You don't want to spring a leak and then have the whole device melt. So yeah, just wiping it up and cleaning it worked out pretty well. And I put the thing back together and everything seems to be fitting properly. So I figure now it's time to test the machine and see if it works. And if you look at these little pumps inside of here, they seem to be in pretty good condition. There wasn't any leaks that got onto there. It was just basically this one piece that got all covered in that goop. So yeah, let's just put this back together. Now I didn't talk to Anchor at all in preparation for this video. I just kind of figured, hey, you know, if someone buys this machine and has this issue, then they're gonna have to figure out how to do this themselves. So I'm gonna just role play through that process and see what I can do and see if the machine still works. The entirety of my troubleshooting was realizing there was a leak after unpacking the printer when I got here to my new office, taking things apart, wiping up as much resin as I could and letting things UV cure in the sun 
to just dry everything up. And now it seems to be in relatively good condition. I did remove the old solvent pack and replace it with a new one. This cartridge cost about 50 bucks, but it's supposed to last between hundreds or thousands of hours. And I'm sure the life that you get out of one of these cleaning cartridges depends on how much you're using the machine and how often you're doing the deep cleaning that uh, it automatically does when you shut the machine down. All of that came in one of these kind of care packages, which comes with a set of all the different inks and a replacement uh, solvent cartridge. So I imagine as you're using this machine, as the inks start running out, you'll just replace cartridges one at a time. And if the machine's maintenance minder tells you that the solvent cartridge is expired, then you just pop that out and replace it. The same goes for the activated carbon filter up here. This is supposed to last some hundreds of hours. I think it says a thousand hours in the little uh, usage guide. But um, yeah, I imagine you'd just replace that after a while as well. So this machine has a few additional consumables compared to a normal 3D printer, but that's to be expected with a more advanced technology like this. But anyways, let's get this thing fired up and see if it still works. I haven't tested it at all. I inspected the inside of all of these cartridge banks to see if there was any excessive leakage and everything looked okay in there. So here goes, we're just gonna plug this thing in. Now when I shut this thing down prior to moving, it runs through an automatic cleaning procedure. So it just takes that solvent from the tank over there and kind of pumps it around through the print head and gets all of that resin dissolved so that if this thing sits for a long time, the ink jets should be clean and still work when you let it sit for a month and then fire it up again as I'm doing now. So we'll see if all that works and we'll see if that solvent leak caused any issues on this machine. I'm excited to see what happens because I really have no idea what's about to happen here. And we'll see how idiot proof this machine really is. All right, it's given us our little startup tone and let's just fire up some random print job. I don't have anything important to do, so I'm just gonna take this little iPhone charging cable thing. I'm gonna put that on here and we'll go ahead and print a couple of things. I'm just going to put a little piece of cardboard down behind it just in case there's any overspray. I'm not sure if it tells you to do that in the manual, but that's just something that I prefer to do just so that I don't make a mess in there. Um, I just like having this clean build plate. They have an application that runs on your computer that you can use to send files over to this thing, but I prefer the app interface, so I'm just gonna fire that up. And we've got this thing hooked up to my new wireless network. It's saying there's a new firmware update. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it because uh, I just don't wanna go through that on a video right now. Okay, it's forcing me to update it, so uh, I guess that's a thing. That is one thing about this machine is it's pretty tied into the cloud, but we'll just let it run through this update process, or maybe I'll just give you a little office tour uh, while we wait for this thing to install. All right, the print head moisturization procedure just finished up. It took about 20 minutes. It wasn't the fastest procedure, but let's get on with things. Let's uh, print some stuff. So everything's ready to print, but I'm gonna go over here, start a new design and uh, let's scan what's on the print bed right now. And that's gonna go through that leveling process. We can watch it happen again, cause it's kind of fun. Just use the lasers to determine the right height there. Now I think it's ready to take some pictures. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some text and I guess we'll see if the printer even works anymore. This printer has been through some weird stuff Okay, I'm gonna actually give you a close up look inside of here so you can see what the print head looks like. That thing on the far right, that bright blue light, that's the UV curing. I think all the stuff on the left is the actual ink jets. So it's kind of interesting to see how this works. I probably don't wanna look at that directly with my eyes, what with that being uh, intense UV light, but I'm happy to look at it through the camera. So see that shiny thing, I think that's the ink jets. All right, so let's see how that turned out. What do we have? Oh yeah, turned out great. Let's take a look there. Huh, it didn't print the whole message. And that was only a two minute print. So if you're doing small stuff like this, it really doesn't take much time at all. Um, but let's hit finish and then let's zoom in. Yeah, it, it cut off the far left and the far right of this message. Let's go ahead and print a photo on here just to see if all the colors work. 
I'll print a photo of the Eufy Make printer tipped up on its side in my U-Haul. That's a very fitting image for this episode. So as you can see, it's up on its side. It should not be stored like that. So yeah, this is what it looked like when it was being uh, stored improperly. It should be stored like this, but instead it was stored like this. Okay, so let's scan the bed and then we'll print this little color image on there just to make sure that all the other print heads are working. And it kind of got chopped off on the left and right sides. I'm pretty sure that has to do with the text functionality on the app. Now this technically still is a pre-production unit, so it's not uncommon to have little issues like this with the app. So we'll have a little patience with it. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just having to struggle through it a little bit, but I'm sure they'll fix this in the final production version. Anchor is a huge company. They've probably got hundreds of engineers working on this stuff. We'll just print over the top of that previous thing. I'll go ahead and crop this to be kind of the same shape and size as that charger. We'll rotate it a little bit to line it up there. Overall, the user experience on this app is pretty darn good, so um, I kind of like it. Now, if I go and change this opacity slider, it doesn't just make the preview look opaque or you know see-through. It actually changes how see through the printed images. So I thought this was just a graphical user interface element that just helped me with alignment. But no, if you have it be being clear like this, then it is kind of see through just like that. And I guess this could be useful if you're printing on glass and you want to be able to see through it, but have kind of like a ghostly image there. But in my case, I want it to be full color. So we're just going to put that there. And then we're going to put our little text over here and I will change the color of this text. I can change it to red. I can pick any color. That's the problem with this machine is you get too many options. You can have too much fun here. Okay, so we'll put that there and we'll go ahead and print this. Hit print. And uh, in this case, we're gonna do, let's do everything. So we'll do a white layer, a CMYK, and a gloss varnish. We're gonna specify that it's plastic as the base material and the print quality, we'll just have it as standard. Okay, it's sending the print file over to the printer over the cloud and there we go. Now when we're ready to print, we can press the start button and we can also fold up these sides and have it kind of contain the uh, aerosol and any kind of, you know, resin issues that you might have here. So right now, it should be just running this activated charcoal filter and uh, extracting all of that odor out of there and picking up all of those particulates. And you can see this has some dust on it because I was moving with this machine. I moved about 800 miles. So it was quite the journey. This thing got jostled around. It got flipped upside down. It's been through some stuff but it seems to be still working. Let's go ahead and press this button to start the print job. Oh, I think I already started it. Let's see what the app is saying. Yeah, it's printing. So I guess it's doing its pre-print startup procedure. All right, so it looks like it just finished up. Let's take a look at how the print turned out. And that looks really nice. Okay, so this is the improper way to store this machine. Now we know to not tip it up on its side and spill solvent everywhere. All right, and that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Basically, I just wanted to share my experience moving with this thing and accidentally breaking it and showing you what it takes to fix it. Um, fortunately, everything works fine. The automatic nozzle cleaning procedure works great. So even if you're storing this and not using it for a while, you're not gonna have to worry about those nozzles drying up. I know that's something that a lot of people said in the comments, they were like, oh, you don't wanna have this type of machine at home because if you turn it off, the nozzles can dry up and the professional machines require a bunch of specialized maintenance. Well, they've automated basically all of that with this machine with that solvent pack in the side. It just cycles and moisturizes and cleans out all of those nozzles when you turn the machine off. Like if I were to turn it off right now, 
Press and hold this button for, I think, five seconds. Now it's going to start the shutdown procedure. So it's the shutdown maintenance, and basically that's just making sure all the nozzles are clean. It's flushing out all of that leftover resin, and it's gonna make sure that this machine is good to go the next time I turn it on. Now my fatal error was flipping the machine around and stuff while it was powered off, and that ended up leaking some resin. So for anyone who's picking up one of these machines, make sure you don't do that. I think that should be something that's really clearly labeled on the packaging and the user guide. Be like, hey, don't flip this thing on its side because it can cause some real problems. Um, fortunately, the machine still works. It's just that resin spill was pretty annoying to clean up and uh, I don't want anyone else to have to go through that experience. But in terms of functionality, everything still works great. As you can see, all the colors turned out nice. We got a really nice print out of it even after you know, breaking the machine. So it's idiot proof enough for the first month of ownership for me, and that's a good thing in my opinion. What would I like to see in this machine moving forward? Well, I'd like to see them establish some kind of Bluetooth only or local area network printing capability. I'm not sure if that's gonna be in the cards for this machine because there's no interface on here. There's no SD card slot, there's no USB port. There's a LAN port which will help you connect to the internet and there's Wi-Fi, which lets you connect to the internet as well, but I guess they're really not intending for this to be a machine that you use in an offline manner. Um, so you just have to make sure you have an internet connection when you're doing this stuff, but as far as print quality and the cool stuff that I've been able to make with this machine, I still think it's a really good buy. It's a cool device, and uh, it's still for sale on Kickstarter. Now, if there's more experiments you want me to do, like printing on 3D printed objects, Maybe I can try that in the future, but this was just the most entertaining thing for me, just you know, seeing if the thing still works after spilling solvent all over the side and um, kind of being worried about it being broken. But uh, it all worked out in the end. So if you want to pick one of these up, I've got links in the video description below. If you want to learn more about my studio, just stay subscribed. I'll be sharing more details with you in the coming videos and in the coming months. So with that, that's uh, all I have for you today. Thank you for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Welcome to the new studio. We're gonna be doing some cool 3D printer builds and some fun experiments in here. 